Join us, Alex and Colleen, self-proclaimed fake it till you make it experts as we navigate the highs and lows of being a woman and how the pressure and overwhelm of trying to do it all often leads to feeling like an imposter in our own lives. This week's guest is Jen Johnson, owner of Tain on the Run Halifax. Jen chats with us about leaving corporate life to build her own business, weathering COVID, and becoming a new mom. Talk about a superhuman. Hello, Colleen. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm really good. Good. Yeah. We both have haircuts. I know. This is my uh, wiggy look, but Matt calls it my Wayne Gretzky look. Your Wayne Gretzky look. Oh, it looks good. I like it. When it's feathered, like Wayne Gretzky from the 80s. What do they call that? The hockey people call it lettuce. Oh. When the hair comes out, I think, um, behind the helmet. Anyway. Um. Yeah, but we're both sporting our short spring dues. Yeah, we're kind of boring right now. Um, it's our last recording session of the season, and you're going away in like less than a week. I am. I'm really excited. I'm going to Europe. Um, I went 10. Have you been? I have not. I went 10 years ago when my daughter moved into university. And so now I get to go back and I'm really excited going with my kids um we're doing paris florence chico terror munich rome sounds amazing and it is i'm just happy to spend time with my kids yeah you know what it's like i mean you've got yours living at home with you but once they move out and you don't get that um quality mom time with your kids anymore you know there's Christmas there's the occasion stuff like that but this is going to be two weeks of us traveling together I'm really excited I think it sounds amazing um that said I'm not sure I'd want to spend two weeks with my kid right now like traveling to that extent but I would definitely spend two weeks with your kids (laughs) great I mean, I love my kid, but I he's 11. He's your kid, he's 11, though. Yeah, it's not quite the same. I feel like it would not be quite as relaxing. Uh, we went to PEI when my kids were that age, and it was not, like, we've not done that many trips as a family, but we did this PEI summer once, and for, for starters, I drove to Picto and then started looking for the bridge. Mm, yeah, that will not work out well. It did it and my kids thought I was an idiot and then we ended up taking the ferry (laughs) and then we were just off course and by the time we got to our hotel like it was just the kids were just fighting with me and I mean we just survived four days together in Chicago which was great um four days is probably my max yeah (laughs) Uh, and you know, maybe when he's an adult and we can do like you know more elaborate trips like that for sure I'm just thrilled. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. Well, if you open your suitcase and I'm in there, just don't be surprised. It's a tiny suitcase you'd fit. I'm excited about our guest today. I am too, but here's... fun fact, I feel like she may have seen both of us naked. <laughs> That's what I was say. Yeah, she's be the only person that's ever seen both of us naked. I was going to say the same thing. And now you have to wait and wonder how that possibly could be. Seen us naked. Uh, I'm glad um, we thought of the same opening line. We did. Yeah. Well, we like, we think alike. Now we're pretty excited because today is we are having Jen Johnson here, who is the owner of Tan on the Run Halifax, which is why she is seeing Colleen and I in very few clothings. Nothing. I wear underwear when I go. Oh, I probably did too. I'm sure I did. So, yeah. but yeah, she is truly a gem and I can't wait to chat with her. I was going to say just picture us naked, but <laughs> she I'm desensitized to that now. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. No. Um, okay. All right, folks, on tonight's podcast, we have Jen Johnson. Jen is the owner of Tan on the Run Halifax. Um, like we said in our little blurb earlier, she has seen both Alex and I naked. Almost. Panties. That's it. In fact, she's seen half of Halifax naked. Probably. Feels like what it, it comes yeah. down to. It feels yeah. like it. So, Tell us about Jen a little bit, Alex. Yeah. So I can't remember how long ago we met, but it's been like three or four Pre-COVID. years. Pre-COVID. Five years, probably. Yeah. 
Um, and Jen is so interesting because you basically like built your business from the ground up, left corporate life, like decided this was going to be something you really were passionate about and wanted to focus on and built this amazing business basically with like no foundation. You just did it. And half the city is your clientele now. And then you've expanded and offered all kinds of different um, product lines or not same product line, but different products and just really honed in on your craft and are so amazing at what you do. Um, putting everybody at ease in situations that can sometimes be super uncomfortable. Um, and I know for me, that was a big deal when I first came to you because I was like, you know, self-conscious and immediately was completely at ease and love your personality, love how warm and welcoming you are, love how in inclusive you are. And obviously you give like the best fucking tan in the city, <laughs> like incredible. Um so I see this successful business person and now new mom, which is super exciting and balancing all of that, surviving COVID with a business that basically was not COVID proof um, and thriving. So, you know, that's, that's how I see you. What do you see or what, how do you feel about <laughs> me describing you that way? <laughs> um, yeah, definitely didn't start that way. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah, really just kind of jumped in it with both feet and very naive and just sort of figured it out as I went along. The thing with spray tanning, it's an unregulated business or industry rather. There's no parameters set in place or governing body saying that in Canada, you have to get this type of training. You have to tan this many people before you can start charging money. Um, so there's not that like support system that you might get from like um, the cosmetology association, right. Um, where you get to go to school and like meet a whole bunch of people. And then you're kind of in it together and figuring it out as you go. In. So I did feel like I was very much on my own and trying to figure it all out. And it's remarkable too, because you built all that infrastructure for yourself, basically. Yeah, I mean, so Tan on the Run is a franchise, um, but we do have a ton of autonomy. Um, you know, I went to Toronto to get formal training there. Um, and so under the Tan on the Run umbrella, like we do have certain like protocols that need to be put in place before we can go out and start tanning people and charging the money. Um, so that's what I really liked about that. But then pretty much once you leave, once I left Toronto, like that was it. Right. And you make mistakes and you just sort of figure it out as you go along and get better every day and encounter things you've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, you know, there's a lot of troubleshooting. How many like, years have you been doing it? Um, So we're eight years right around this month, actually. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, So you began in like, tell us a little bit about how you started you, you made your way up through because you were in the corporate world yeah first yeah so tell us a little bit about your education and and <laughs> right till now did a commerce degree okay and actually um didn't get a job right out of university and continued to work in the restaurant industry which ended up being quite a bit of a blessing because um if you've worked in it before it's really good money and it yeah. helped me pay my student loan off very quickly um so it was a bit of a shock when I went to a nine-to-five job and had more of a structure and and no um, tips and no tips yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and even the hours weren't that much better um and sort of worked my way up. I, I started uh, in personal lines insurance and then worked, uh, moved over to corporate and into the sales department and just never really felt like home. What made you decide tanning? What made you decide to, well, first of all, to run your own business, to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, so this is where like the imposter syndrome comes in a bit because I had no idea I think I'd had one spray tan in my life before I started doing this. Um, I just wanted to work for myself. I wanted to set my own hours. And um, I saw this pitch on Dragon Sen about uh, spray tanning. And I was like, I could do that. Let me, let me do some research. And I called some of the other locations and asked around for people that I knew that worked kind of um, in the beauty industry and, um, picks some people's brains and the startup costs were not so significant that if it didn't work out that I felt like I just like spent all my entire life savings um yeah that was sort of where 
things started. I just, uh, when I first started doing this, I was still working my full-time job and, um, I was doing it like evenings and weekends. And, you know, there was a lot of people, um, you know, had their little side hustle. It was just kind of at that age, no one really had kids yet, you know, so it was just sort of uh, something fun to do in my spare time, but then really started to enjoy that more than the nine to five and um, really hit home that I was not happy or fulfilled with my corporate job. Just wasn't what I envisioned doing for the rest of my life. <laughs> Where do you think you were more of an imposter when you were in the corporate world working in insurance sales or entrepreneur? Like where does the, where did it come out more? Both. Yeah. 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 You're working in a job that, you know, you don't really, you're good at. I was really good at my job um, in corporate, but I didn't love it and it didn't bring me happiness. And in fact, it made me miserable. <laughs> um, so moving into tanning, I mean, I felt like I don't know what I'm doing, but it's fun, right? Like I'm not, I'm making people happy at the end of the day. And that's not necessarily the end result with insurance. No, not <laughs> at all. Were you surprised at your ability to build your clientele to the extent that you did? Oh, it was, it was a slow burn. Mm. Yeah. Like I was still doing my full-time job for about a year and a half. And I, um, really it was my husband said if if you want to do this just take a year and see what happens yeah so if it wasn't for him I I'd be doing some I'd be doing a nine to five job yeah and it's interesting too because your hours do have to be kind of a little bit all over the map in order to accommodate the clientele yeah um so just talk to us a little bit about how the business has evolved for you because I know when I first started to see you you know, you were doing the tent and then you actually put in like permanent infrastructure mm -hmm. and those kind of things. So how, how did that kind of all come around? Yeah. So we moved into the North end in 2018 and, um, we bought this house that was zoned properly. Um, and it had a side entrance and I, you know, when we first initially looked at it, it was straight out of the seventies. Um, but I saw the potential there and we, I was there for maybe the first seven months we had, like, I had put up sort of a temporary setup and then we had a contractor come in early, uh, 2019 and build me this essentially a shower unit, um, with ventilation and the ceiling and, um, so that I could, tan people a little bit more effectively like the tents are great but they cast a lot of shadows and um you know I was able to tell them where to put the lighting so it worked well for me and worked well for the clients um and then COVID well then I got pregnant and I got to the point where I just I couldn't do I couldn't carry my kid around I couldn't do the mobile anymore. And I noticed a huge change as soon as I started doing a hundred percent in studio tans, um, that I started to make money, <laughs> right? Like it really wasn't sustainable. It was, you know, it was okay, but we were paying the bills, but it wasn't like a lot of money for extra stuff, for extra spending money. Um, and then COVID happened. And so, having that space with the hard surface and the sanitization and I was able to control my environment and not have to worry about exposing my daughter to, you know, at the, in the beginning, we were so, all so terrified about what was going on. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I just, uh, I realized I could fill my schedule um, a lot easier and better um, when people came to me and I, um, really had to shift like my business model and yeah, it just, how, and I got how many people, sorry. And, and how many people continue to get tans during COVID? Well, Was every, that... every time we, <laughs> every time we went into a lockdown, no one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was frustrating because we would have very little to no notice, like, oh, effective tomorrow, you can no longer offer services that require the removal of a mask. So I did get creative, um, you know, was tanning clients with their mask on and I was sending them home with self tanner to do their faces at home. Smart. Yeah. 
So, um, I, you know, was able to get around that aspect of it. And obviously like, you know, if people wanted to cancel the appointment. That was an option for them as well. But here you were with a brand new facility. You just spent money to put this whole thing yeah. together. <laughs> it's beautiful, by the way. Like you go in, there's a little sitting area. There's a place to change. There's a beautiful shower. Like it is well put together. It is. It looks really good. And it's very cozy and they're very yeah. comfortable. You get this whole beautiful spot put together and then COVID hits. Yeah, that sucked. That sucked. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's hard. Like I don't have the overhead that a big salon would have right? Um, I'm a registered business. I was eligible for um, some COVID relief um, or the CERB, right? Uh, so yeah, if I didn't have any of that, and I think that you, you saw a lot of people leaving that the industry for those reasons. Serving up hot brews, refreshing cold drinks, lots of fresh baked goodies and delicious lunch options. Visit the Mellow Mug in the heart of Larry Utech for dine-in, takeout, or drive through service. Their spacious cafe offers a casual and inviting vibe that's perfect for everything from enjoying a good book, hanging with friends, or meeting a colleague. The Mellow Mug is your neighborhood spot for great coffee and delicious eats and sweets. All right, so you identify, which is no surprise to me, as a superhuman. So superhuman measures competence based on how many roles they can both juggle, juggle and excel in. Falling short in any role as a manager, team member, parent, partner, friend, volunteer, all evoke shame because they feel they should be able to handle it all perfectly and easily. Yep. Superhuman. <laughs> how does that resonate most for you? uh all of it <laughs> yeah <clears throat> like multiple balls in the air at all times yeah so you've got balls in the air with business and then you've got a young child yeah so like I think if unless well you know when you run your own business there's a lot of things that go on behind the scene so I have my face time with my clients which take up a lot of time and then I have all the stuff that happens before and afterwards right so there's like deep cleaning of equipment and taking things apart um there's all the administration work the the accounting um marketing which I have been not doing well at <laughs> um yeah, like you're just you're like the dishwasher, you know, you're doing all you're doing all the things. Um, so you know, my posted hours are not my posted hours, yeah. right? Because there's all those things that need to be done. Um I think that's so to true. run the business. Yeah. You know, so I always want to say, No, I'm sorry, I can't tan you on my day off. It's Sunday. It's not really my day off because guess what I did today? <laughs> I spent time with my family. But I also deep cleaned my studio. Um, I actually pulled out my tents uh, and rinsed them all out. I do still do mobile tans. Uh, we didn't. I sort of alluded to the fact that I don't, but I I do. Um, I just have put a price increase in place, um, and you kind of have to book me a little further out in advance because um, there's some logistics around that. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think just put good structure and boundaries around them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I learned that the hard way over the years. If you knew, if you were mentoring somebody leaving the corporate world to start an entrepreneurial journey of whatever, yeah. kind, what what's your best advice? What's your advice? Oh, definitely go through like a seed program or I forget the other. There's a couple options out there if you're under 40, 35. Um I would definitely suggest having like an, like a networking group mm -hmm. in place, like people that you meet up with um, frequently that aren't necessarily in your business, but they can see your business from a different perspective, um, you know, and be your cheerleaders. I think Halifax, we're really lucky living in this city. Yeah. It, you know, it's relatively small. I did not grow up here, but talking to clients who do and it always makes me laugh how everyone is connected everyone seems to know everyone um somehow if they've grown up here so I think word of mouth is really key um showing up um doing what I say I'm gonna do being reliable under promising and over delivering when did you know it was going to work? So your husband said, let's take <laughs> I'm a still year. waiting for that day. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any day now. <laughs> Do you ever sit back and go, I think I should get a job? Oh, COVID for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was tough on the heart, the head. Yeah. You okay. just feel like we're finally, oh, oh, we can finally breathe. And then we go into another lockdown. And um, yeah, that, I think that last lockdown we had was the hardest one I think around that Christmas broke, time. That broke people. Yeah. I was yeah. in literal tears. Yeah. I went from having a full, full book uh, around Christmas time to like, you know, numbers dropping off so quickly that I just wondered why I didn't just take the time off and go spend Christmas with my family. People don't, like you said, people don't see all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. They just see mm -hmm. the one hour or the 40 minutes that they're in to see you. It's right. so technical and it makes me laugh because I've seen you a lot. Um, <laughs> and every time I forget exactly what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Every time, every time. That's okay. That's my job, not your job. <laughs> no, that's, but it's so technical. It's like move like this. And it all, it's such, it's such an exact process that I always find so intriguing as well, because it doesn't, you know, you don't know what's happening, but then everything is perfect and it yeah. all, you know, dries perfectly and washes, rinses perfectly. And it, it, there's so much, it's so scientific to a certain extent, which I always find really impressive. And, but at the same time, you're doing all this thing, you're having these conversations with people about things that are about their life to put them at ease, because most of the time they're in varying degrees of nudity, which can be super uncomfortable for people. <laughs> Sometimes when they've met you for the first time, and you do such an amazing job of just making that not a thing. Like it's not even a thing. You don't even realize that you are showing somebody more of your body than probably most people in the world have seen. And you, it's the same thing. When I went in there, I mean, I was I was going to be the flower girl in Stephanie, right. Stephanie Graham's wedding. And, you know, I went in there. I was so nervous. It's been a long time since somebody's seen me naked and yeah. I was going to like strip off in front of you. And again, I walked out of there with a big old smile on my face. I had a fantastic tan. You made me feel like a million bucks. And like, that's not normal. Like you really have a gift. Yeah, I, I agree with really you. Do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like mad respect for people who are willing to completely strip down in front of a stranger for the first time. So, um, I mean... I have major respect for people who are willing to do that. I just think it's so amazing how you kind of can, you can just put everybody at ease by talking about like, you know, silly things that are going on, like even the weather or a point <laughs> of contact, you know, you and I often talk about the gym because we went to the same gym yeah. or, you know, I've now friends, so it's a little different, but yeah. just finding those pieces that you know are going to put people at ease in a situation that would typically be uncomfortable is, is so interesting. And I think, um, yeah, like I said, it's not everyone that can do that. And I, right. I'm feeling that's probably why you have such a great retention business. It wasn't always that way, mm -hmm. right? I I think now that it's a bit of a muscle memory, mm -hmm. um, then I don't have to concentrate so hard on the tan aspect of it um, because it's just something I've gotten so used to doing, mm -hmm. like tan in my sleep. God, I have dreams about it. It's okay. weird. <laughs> but oh my God, when I first started, I had cheat sheets. It would take me, oh my God, probably close to an hour to tan a person. Like, like it wasn't always good. And I would be so focused. I'm sure I was very quiet in the beginning, um, just super concentrated on the task at hand. And, you know, now that I don't have to think about it consciously so much um, that, yeah, I just like to talk. I just want to be around people. It, do you still feel imposter syndrome? Oh, yeah. It was really evident during um, COVID. Like spray tanning was that industry that fell through the cracks, right? I'm like wedding industry adjacent. I'm beauty industry adjacent, right? So I don't get the FaceTime with others in the industry as much as I would like to. Um, you know, I just sort of, if you look at it like an office environment, like I don't have an office I don't have my peers yeah so. in this city too you were one of the first to be offering this service in a major way weren't you kind of pioneered um, the industry to a certain extent I know there are more other players and there's yeah. certainly more now but I think I was one of the few that were full-time mm. and I think that's still the case I think there's only a handful of us that are doing this full-time um as a business as our sole source of income um yeah, so I think that there is a bit of a hobby mentality 
around it. Um, but there were, there were people doing it for sure. One of the ways to combat imposter syndrome is to actually listen to how awesome the people in your life think you are. If you're looking for the perfect gift for a loved one, where you can tell them all of the things that make them special, visit my Drawbridge Creative Etsy shop and purchase a Things We Love About You custom poster. With several styles to choose from, it's a fabulous gift for any milestone birthday, anniversary, retirement, or just because. Like the tanning, it's nice to have a tan, but for me, when I get a tan, what I'm actually purchasing is like self-esteem. Yeah. Like I, I feel so amazing when I have a spray tan and I need to do it more. And I always say that even my husband is sometimes like, I'm having a, a week. He's like, yeah. why don't you go get a spray tan? <laughs> because he knows. It just lifts me up like that. Um, and it's just, I think that's such an incredible thing to be able to give to people just to feel comfortable in your own skin um, especially safely. Yeah. Cause I've been tanned a lot because yeah. I don't like the sun. Um, but that's not good. So, you know, using it as an alternative to harmful sun rays is also something that's really important. And I think you really do a really great job of promoting uh, sun care and yeah. that, that type of thing as well. I don't want anyone to feel shameful for being outside on a gorgeous day like today. Right. But there is alternatives to, a natural UV tan um, and the technology has come such a long way now that you really can fake it and oh, look yeah. like you have an actual suntan. You know? Do you see the change in women when they come in and they're all, you know, pale and then they walk out and like, do you see the oh, lift? The yeah. As the... It's a confidence booster for them. It's a confidence booster for me to see the look on their face. And I love, I've had so many new to tanning clients um you know it's one of the questions I typically ask someone when they first come to see me is if they've had a spray tan before and I can't get over how many people are coming who've never had one before um so that's really nice to see like it's you know, people are becoming a little bit more aware of the dangers um of getting a uv tan um and if you know, the cancer risk doesn't scare you enough. I mean, I think it appeals to the vanity in it, in us, right? We all want to look younger, longer. Yeah. Um, and we know the facts are there that uh, sun exposure makes us age faster. So besides your business, which is fantastic, <laughs> you, you're a young mom, you're a new mom. Yeah, not young, just not mom. young, just new mom. <laughs> Weird. Um, how are you feeling about that? three years in yeah does <clears throat> does the imposter syndrome come into you as a mom oh yeah there's mom guilt all the time yeah mom guilt because you're working or mom, mom I think guilt? there's just guilt everywhere yeah. so yeah mom <laughs> guilt because I'm not with her every evening um client guilt that I'm not available all the time anymore because I really had a lot of availability and was very flexible with my schedule and I just can't do that anymore so there's been a lot of guilt with that I feel like I'm letting people down left right and center but at the end of the day um I have to do what's best for my family yeah and for you it's funny we had you know previous to this just talked about um putting putting boundaries in place. And, you know, when I started doing that, when I started protecting my time, my business time, um, you know, implementing a cancellation policy and enforcing that cancellation policy, um, everything did fall into place. I've never been busier. I had the best year uh, financially, like from a financial point of view last year. And um, I actually just broke in February of all months. I broke my best month, which had previously been August, which, you know, that's amazing. I, I, yeah. So, but it was really hard. I felt yeah. who, who does she think she is, you know, charging me because I can't come to my appointment or, um, so there's a lot of imposter syndrome around this, a syndrome around trying to, um, put boundaries in place and people not being happy about it.
right? And I'm a people pleaser. So that was really hard. Me too. Oh, that's, that's yeah. Uh, this is a conversation I've had with the numerous people, one being my therapist. Well, I've, had, I've had it with my therapist. Same. A <laughs> it's a running uh, theme for us. But that boundary piece is so interesting because um, I also struggle with boundaries. I think most entrepreneurs do. I think most people do, but yeah. especially people pleasers, which I also am. But when you do, the respect that people actually have for you increases so much, even though it's so hard to put it in place and you feel that like, who am I to do this? Yeah. How, you know, people are going to lead. But what it does is it actually, usually for the right clients, the clients that are aligned, um, it just makes people understand that you can value your time even more. So I'm yeah. so glad to hear that that's worked so well for you. Because I think it's important for people to hear that boundaries are super hard to put in place especially if you haven't had them for so long yeah but they really do they're necessary in order to propel to the next level sometimes when you are a people pleaser and a high achiever it takes having somebody else uh, to make them as the priority to then make yourself a priority I think yeah. that's how I found when Carrie was born uh previous to that I didn't really make myself a priority ever yeah. Uh, but then once he was born, I kind of didn't have a choice. Yeah. I needed to make him a priority. And in order to make him a priority, I had to make me yeah. a priority. Yeah. So and I like, like her. Oh, yeah. I want to spend time with yeah, her. Right, I like exactly. her. She's yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm somebody's mom. <laughs> you know, like, but yeah. we only yeah. get one life and we need to enjoy it. And I think I, you know, a mistake I've made in the past is I've been really, really focused on work, mm -hmm. um, really driven in that respect. And it's really opened my eyes that you can do both without burning out yeah you can do yeah. both without burning out yeah you really and can. I have burnt out in oh, the past gosh, and yeah. I'm very cautious of that happening and um you know I felt like it was coming down the pipeline and so I, I made some changes you know that worked for me right and I think I had to let go of the fact that I can't be everything to everyone mm. I can't be available 24 7 and I can't be available on Sundays and so it, and maybe we should rip up this superhuman <laughs> and stop being that because you know you can't it's yeah. so hard to be that yeah I think that's a more recent development that I've recognized yeah Are we ready for speed rounds god you're gonna sing it it's our speed round we ask five questions and you answer them as quick okay. as possible okay what's your favorite season fall hello <laughs> for Go different reasons gut. i think right now because i'm excited that the it's getting warmer yeah um but i like fall fashion the best but then it's depressing right. that you know winter's coming uh favorite type of music everything but death metal and i'm sorry country cannibal or dip a toe probably cannibal what time well, to go to bed what time do I want to go to bed or what time do I actually go to bed? Go. Usually in bed in my comfies in the winter time, nine o'clock, but like lights out maybe 10, 10 30. Uh, what's your favorite body part on me? Yeah, it's always what people <laughs> say. People always ask or on other people. Well, first of all, on you. And then other people. And then I want to know what your favorite body part is to spray. But yes, oh, oh, on you. That's what you should have said. There you go. What's your favorite body part on you? my eyes your eyes mm, they're yeah. beautiful blue um what's your favorite body part to spray um I don't think I necessarily have a favorite body part to spray <laughs> yeah everybody's bodies are different right mm, so yeah. yeah but the legs are for by far the easiest yeah. um well thank you yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much thanks for joining for, Thanks us. for having me. Yeah, thanks so for fun talking to you. You were enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, thanks for seeing us make it. Um, if you would like to see Jen for a spray tan, we'll leave all her information in the show notes, her website, her Instagram. She's got a really cool online store too. So um, yeah, go and see her if you haven't. You will not regret it. Yeah, and you know what? I think it's for, for you know, our our. our listeners who have imposter syndrome you know if you're having a bad day or a bad week bad month go get a lift up yeah go get a spray tan it's probably yeah. the number one reason people come in the winter yeah if they're not traveling it's just for a mood lifter mood lifter yeah. oh mood it's booster. amazing how much it does yeah confidence booster mm -hmm. right i just thought if i should take my shirt off <laughs> for consistency Alex, Alex, you can put his shirt on. If you want to rewind. <laughs>
<laughs> I may have forgotten that I did not have a bra on, but I, I think that's, <laughs> I think you're kind of hidden behind the table. We're it's good because you could probably cut some glass. <laughs> Anywho, all right, I'm going to leave my shirt on. <laughs> Just don't mind the lack of consistency <laughs> between the two. Oh, God, that's funny. Uh, but, so I think we need to talk a little bit further. You you get a lot of tans. I do. Well, I do. Yes, I go through phases. So I've only had one with um, Jen, but she mentioned it was Melanoma Awareness Month. And boy, that's important. Yeah, I mean, as someone who has worshipped the sun more than I should um, and and still struggle <laughs> with that <laughs> balance, yeah. um, having that option to have a safe tan is so important. And um, that awareness around uh, sun care and SPF and the importance of wearing SPF every day, even if it's not, you know, obviously sunny because UV rays are year round. Um it's really important and melanoma is serious and can be, you know, life-threatening. So having those options, but also just that awareness around SBF and sun safety and, you know, taking it really seriously. Um, like Jen said, if, it, if the cancer doesn't scare you, the vanity should. And I, that's how I definitely feel like I'm obviously, um, fear cancer, but, also really dislike the amount of damage on my face because I did not take care of myself um, in my younger years. So I don't know if we have a younger listenership, but if we do, wear your SPF. Wear your SPF. And you know what? Have somebody this month, you know, I, I made the comment that, you know, nobody really ever sees my back as such. Like have somebody have a look, make sure that there's mm. nothing going on back there. And and Jen mentioned if, you know, if you're in to get a tan and you want her to have a look, she'll have a look. Also, you know, things to look out for, moles changing is a big one or irregular shaped moles or new moles popping up. I usually will always kind of when I'm in to see my doctor, um, probably to her annoyance, be like, hey, I've got this new mole. Can you look at it make sure it's okay or you know does this one look all right but always a good idea just to kind of keep on top of those things because it can be happening like under the surface and you don't know what's happening yeah so it's melanoma awareness month so have a look over your body yeah wear your spf and go see jen because she will make you feel like a million bucks like we said she's seen us both naked so yeah do your thing go see her go get a tan check your bodies Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Imposter Sisters. Please remember, we're not doctors or mental health experts. If you're looking for mental health guidance, please see our show notes for local resources. We'd like to thank our location sponsor, The Mellow Mug, located at 64 Delridge Lane, for donating this amazing space for us to have these important chats and for supplying us with drinks and goodies. Please give them a follow and make sure to stop in to see this beautiful spot for yourself. Until next time, keep your head high and we will see you next Tuesday. Are you looking to up your social media game? Social media can be intimidating and overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. At Every Day on Branding, we truly believe that every day is an opportunity to showcase your brand through authentic and aligned social media strategy and content. Whether you're looking for done-for-you social management or monthly strategy sessions, the team at Every Day on Branding can help you reach your ideal audience in a way that feels aligned and drives conversion. If you'd like to have the Imposter Sisters come into your business and help you and your team get comfortable creating social media content, ask us about our new Keen to Screen program, a value-packed social media training for anyone that is looking to up their social media presence, either as a solopreneur or to empower their team to be impactful brand ambassadors.